Greetings everyone, this is Mars. I've uh, just completed my Planet of the Apes run and I wanted to show it off. Planet of the Apes was, uh, back before Star Wars, this was the science fiction franchise. And uh, growing up in the 70s, the apes were everywhere. We had the Migos and the TV show and the cards and uh, it was a big deal before Star Wars, of course. And uh, this magazine, I remember, buy, I remember buying this first issue of Planet of the Apes at a uh, local department store. And uh, it was very exciting to actually get a number one. And uh, I bought the magazine off and on through the 70s. Uh, later on, it got harder to find. I guess the distribution got a little smaller. So uh, the last few issues were exclusively through eBay and stuff, as I don't ever remember seeing them on the uh, on the newsstands, and they got sort of thinner, and they dropped out the features, and it was just comics. But the first few issues were a pretty good size, and they had some uh, behind-the-scenes stuff on the movies and the TV show, and uh, makeup stuff, and uh, it was a fun magazine. And uh, I said I wanted to show them off before these are going off to the bindery, and we'll be... Uh, on my bookshelf by the end of the year to read. A lot of great uh, Mike Plug artwork in here. Uh, Alfredo Ocala, I think, did some artwork. You know, the artwork's really good. So here's issue one. We'll go through these kind of quickly. There's two. The magazine uh, that had a the two features, two comics features. The first one would be an adaption of the films starting in chronological order with the original Planet of the Apes and then the uh, second feature would be an original story I think it was called Terror of the Planet of the Apes and the uh, adaption of the first film is issue three the first two films actually I think Planet of the Apes and Beneath uh, Marvel would uh, create a color comic series called Adventures of the Planet of the Apes, uh, regular comic size, and would, uh, of course, they were black and white in the magazine, but in the comics it'd be in color, and I think you get the first two movies, and I think they just ran for like 12 issues in that series. Here's issue three. These colors are a lot of fun. They put the apes in a lot of different uh, scenarios and time errors you wouldn't see in the movies, like here's, looks like, you know, Lewis and Clark meet the Planet of the Apes. Probably down the river. Looks like they're fighting Indians or something. Issue five. Let's back this up a little bit. Let's see a little better. Issue five. Here's issue six. And this featured the final part of Planet of the Apes, the first film. Issue 7, the adaption of Beneath the Planet of the Apes began. And, uh, Beneath was a fairly good sequel. Roddy McDowell was not in it. Charlton Heston is in there. Or a glorified cameo. James Franciscus plays the uh, new astronaut. And a very downbeat ending, if you haven't seen it. Sweet. Issue 9. Issue 10. See the bomb with the Eaton's worship right beneath. It's issue 11. Issue 12. And this cover will give you a hint as to what happens at the end of Beneath the Planet of the Apes if you haven't seen it. 
Yes, spoiler alert, they blow up the Earth. So, what do you do for the third film? It's very clever, actually. How uh, the third film, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, acts as a sequel to Beneath. I really like this uh, franchise. It's issue 13. It's kind of blurry. That's better. I really enjoyed these films as a kid and uh, still dig them. Uh, my favorite of the franchise is definitely Conquest, which is the fourth film. It uh, actually kind of frightened me and disturbed me as a kid. It's 14. Here's another great scene that we never saw in the movies. Aped underwater, finding a squid. You see the price drop to 75 cents and the issues get thinner at this point. You just get comics. And I think uh, there might not even be letters columns anymore. There's 16. This is uh, the final issue of the Excuse me, the uh, adaption of Escape from Planet of the Apes. Issue 17. I remember I bought this is one of the issues I bought off the rack. I remember this cover. And uh, this begins the adaption of Conquest. Like I said, it's my favorite film of the series. The uh, final scene of Conquest with Roddy McDowell kind of in front of a, a city in flames while he's berating the human race. It's just, I think it's just an iconic moment in science fiction, especially the 70s and 70s cinema in general. That's a powerful film. Number 19, Demons of the Psychedrome. Doug Minch wrote a lot of these uh, original stories. One of my favorite comics writers. Number 20. Here's number 21. This is the final chapter of Conquest. Looks like this was all original here. They didn't start uh, Battle Beyond, Battle for Planet of the Apes quite yet. I think that's the next issue. There's 23. Battle for the Planet of the Apes begins, and this is a battle is, I think, the least of the films. It's pretty rushed, very cheap. The uh, battle. It was essentially a handful of apes and a handful of mutants and a school bus. It's, there's not much going on there. 24. Station 25. These later issues can be quite hard to find. On the secondary market, they're usually pretty expensive. If you hunt around, you occasionally find them cheap if you buy them in bulk. But uh, most sellers seem to think these are worth a whole lot more than they're actually worth, I think. This is your 27. For instance, this issue here, I was, you know, I needed, and there's a seller at a local show who always has this book, but I think he's asking like $125 for it. I'm not going to pay $125 for an issue of Planet of the Apes, sorry. So, as you can see, I did a little better. Got for five. 28. And the final issue, 29. And right around this time, Star Wars comes out, and then we all forget about Planet of the Apes. So, 
said this was a minor milestone. I was wanted to brag a little bit and show this runoff. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I'll post another video soon with another one of my uh, runs that I've completed. I'm working my way through the Marvel magazines the 70s. Uh, I've got most of them now. Uh, still missing some Savage Sword and uh, uh, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. I still have to complete those. Thanks for watching. Bye.